Good morning, this is Hume Animal, and why am I back? Why am I recording when I was going to have a little break? Well, can you answer me this? In which transcript, in which video did Barry Morphew himself say, I left my wife Suzanne at home in bed at 5am? Did that come from Andy Mormon to make Barry look like a liar? Andy Mormon also said that Barry went to Colorado Springs, etc, etc. Andy Mormon is very fond of saying things so that Barry looks like a liar. Now, it doesn't mean that Barry isn't a murderer. But stop and think, because are you being a repeater? Are you responsible for lies spreading around the world in 80 seconds? Are you compounding problems? Do you have integrity? Do you even understand what you're doing when you do these things? This rote repeating. You know, look at the facts. Do you not think that law enforcement understand Barry was in a hotel on a certain day or a certain night? Do you not think they've seen the scene? Do you not think they've interviewed staff? Do you have zero trust in law enforcement now, in the FBI, in local authorities? I mean, I know we've been let down quite a lot in the past. They let Letitia Stauk move a young child's body. They allowed a young child's body to be transported out of state. So, understandably, there are many reasons why we may have lost a little faith. But guess what? In this case of Barry Morphew versus the world, it is law enforcement that we must trust. If we think we know something, they know more. Think of where the news source is coming from. Barry is talking about what people say, what's out there, you know, and God dang it, he's got a point. He's got a point, hasn't he? Because someone says that he said something and suddenly it's as if Barry said it and said it out loud to the world or to someone after the fact of Suzanne Moore few being reported missing. But no, where are a lot of these things coming from? They're coming from mischievous or evil people on the internet for their own purposes and entertainment. And they're coming from the Mormon family. They're coming out of the mouth of Andy Mormon, who wants Barry to look like a liar. Okay, so Andy might think Barry is 100% guilty, so Andy just wants the world to get rallied behind him. I don't think Andy Mormon is showing much integrity at all, and he's being pretty damn righteous, isn't he? And he's got the support, you see, and you think, who's supporting him to this extent? Who is not ensuring that we are just looking at fact and, and looking at data to correctly? And having these things reconciled at the time they come out of someone's mouth. For example, for example, ensuring, oh, and Barry told this to law enforcement, did law enforcement tell this to you? If, if Barry hasn't said something directly to us, and if it's not somehow something that the public has been able to secure down as fact, we do not know. So you're all possibly struggling and laboring under misinformation and misapprehensions and looking in the wrong direction. And I'm not saying not looking at Barry, but wow, isn't he being quite persecuted now? And that could be quite um, the right way to go if a murderer 
is um, who he is. But are we really seeing the big picture here? Are we seeing the whole picture? Are we seeing the real story? I don't think so. Wow, whatever happened to question everything? And I think it's quite irresponsible of some of these large YouTubers, the way that they are egging them on. And it makes me feel uncertain. It makes me feel like it's for self-promotion, and I don't want to feel like that. It makes me feel like it's not about justice, but it's about growth, and I don't want to feel like that. Do you know what I don't like? I don't like feeling manipulated, and I don't like feeling frustrated. I don't like feeling discombobulated. What I like is to be able to look at things like fact, confirmed data, also I do speculate and I speculate when I see things directly in front of me. So, well, what I'm seeing is, yes, you know, a brother that is making a lot of things come out of someone's mouth, they could or could not be true, but they're not confirmed. And yet they are being spread around the world like wildfire. You know, this 80 seconds around the world, that's how quickly the life will spread and then it becomes law, L-O-R-E, it becomes fact, it becomes part of the narrative and it could very well be 100% wrong. Now at first I was giving Andy Mormon the benefit of the doubt when he said Colorado Springs because I said well it's very easy sometimes you know, if you're a YouTuber, if you make videos, you know, it's very easy just to drop in the wrong name. It's like Lauren correcting, saying, oh, people are always saying Maysville and it's Maysfield. She said that on Profiling Evil. So we have to do give people the benefit of the doubt sometimes, don't we? We can't be hard on everybody. Everyone's learning and things come out of our mouths. I've said Maysfield before too, Lauren, but, but it's Maysville like village, it's Maysville. So if you can get that wrong, what else? Well, let's think about a transcript where you write it down and you write it exactly the way it sounds. And then when you read it later, you put your own inflection. So this may make it sound like there were 30 hours times three of interviews that Barry has been through, 90 hours. The way that the transcript is written and the way that it could have actually been spoken is I've done three and then just correction rather than just saying look three long interviews correction and let's just sum it up here to 30 hours because it was three 10 hour, 10 hour interviews three full days um, so I, I feel that it's 30 hours in total and that it was just read differently to how it was spoken it gives a whole new meaning now, at first, as I was saying, I was giving Andy Mormon the benefit of the doubt about Colorado Springs and things like that. I thought, well, you know, it's easy just to get things wrong and, and, and not realize and not correct yourself. You do realize later, you do know what happened or was said. But excuse me, I'm going to sip some coffee. But, you know, the opportunity's gone right then and there to correct. Um, so, you know, 6 p.m., getting back, he said... Barry said nine. Okay, so one or t'other might be wrong. We, we can have that confirmed by law enforcement, surely, when the time comes. But as time goes on, it makes you think, well, what is coming out of Andy's mouth and why? I mean, you know, he's got to let law enforcement do the job. They don't need him embellishing or muddying the waters um, to get an arrest, really. They shouldn't. You know, it's not all hinging on Andy, da, da, da. So, what I found interesting was initially, now initially, usually the truth will come out straight away and it's unadulterated and that's when, um, you know, you're getting these real responses. When he first spoke of Barry in the meeting, he said that Barry was wondering, who's got her, where is she, is she okay? Okay, and that came out of Andy's mouth. Is Andy going to say that again? Or are we just going to get these misdirections? Because I feel that's what they are, is misdirections. And it could be coming from a place of, 
you know, protection over his sister. Um, and it could be something else too. It could be something else darker. And this is wrong. No matter what his motivation is, this is wrong. And yet he's being supported to do things. And the world is on fire with it. And it feels like vigilanteism. It feels like Salem 1400s, the witch hunts. And it feels like the crucible, doesn't it? With Barry Morphew there with a big scarlet letter on his jumper. And is it a scarlet A for adulterer? Is it a scarlet M for murderer? The investigation has included two very complex, long searches of the home. And it can take a while for information to be put together it has been a very long time though hasn't it and no arrest i believe there is a super duper mystery here and i don't know if it's just because of how suzanne left the mountain she would get a car she would get in a car with someone she loved and knew her husband perhaps or someone close to her as barry says someone who, who she knows well, someone close to her. And uh, this can be the reason for no blood, you know. Have they gone to the campsite? I, I think the same way um, in that regard as masked therapists. I hope I've got that right again, masked therapist. Um, because actually, yeah, she mentioned the campsite too. And I think, you know, we have to trust that all of these sites are being looked at. Um, I would expect that the entirety of Longhorn Ranch would be searched over. Maybe that's some, somewhere that Salida residents can go to. Just, just triple checking. Um, but I have a feeling Suzanne is nowhere near this mountain and not the area around Maysville at least um, and we know the terrain is such that it, even if she was she may not be found but you know I don't think the search that Andy Mormon is leading the charge of is as valuable now as it would have been in the days after and that would have been very difficult yes but perhaps EquiSearch Texas could have been um, Phoned then. Yeah, I just feel like, okay, second search warrants, what's happening? I, I think I would have gone back into town because there was no arrest and, you know, you'd want to either be keeping your eye out or do some more investigating right then and there because allowing three or four months to go past is just, I think it's just bonkers. I don't care if law enforcement has said keep quiet. They, they haven't shackled anybody, they haven't actually gagged anybody and it's all very strange. It's pretty clear that Mallory and Macy want nothing to do with the Mormon family. Let it rest. We don't know what law enforcement and Mallory and Macy have conversed about. I'm concerned that someone's going to get hurt that not only are good-hearted searches going to Salida and Maysville, that's Maysville, Lauren Scharf, but that someone will get hurt because vigilantes are going there also, because tensions are running high. I think we need to listen, really be aware of what we are being told to think and feel, and by whom, you know, is everything verifiable if it's not verified it's not necessarily true okay so holiday suite um the holiday in suite towels etc well if someone was overnight there it would be like that if someone was there in the morning and cleaned up it would be like that yes it could be suspicious it may not be are there spa pools there was there a mistress there and there's a spa pool being used don't look at my dirty window well, look at that. I've got to give that a wash, don't I? It's hard to clean when you've got the screens on that you can't move, can't get to the other side. Um, 
you know, it's all just projection, conjecture, conflabulation, guesswork, emotion. Okay. Oh, golly. I mean, you know, no, it doesn't look good for Baz, but why should it be that people are allowed to possibly lie and that is now the truth it's it's not gaslighting as such but it, it kind of is isn't it it's along those lines of um gaslighting us it th this is smoke and mirrors this is manipulation and it's being supported it's being supported loudly now by people whom i feel should know better and should know better professionally it's all great to support family and help get a message out, etc. But they should be questioned too because only to, to nail down fact. That should be the curiosity. That should be the integrity is to nail down the facts. There is nothing wrong with saying, oh, that's interesting, 6 p.m., Da, da, da. and then following a thought through oh that's interesting 5 a.m but you know a hotel he's booked into a hotel has lauren Scharf directly asked so i mean you can't help thinking okay well do we just not have the inside track to do profiling evil for example through lauren Scharf understand some of these things are fact that barry did turn up at the holiday suite in the morning and that's nailed down as fact because Lauren Shaft, as a journalist, when she's had her journalist brain on asking these questions, has asked him specifically and he has answered and we are just protected from that information for some reason. Perhaps, you know, but, you know, you feel like is information not being released to us? I mean, you want to hold on to your own information sometimes. Well, why bring up? false information or allow false beliefs to circulate um, just don't mention it at all so that there's misunderstanding you know um, don't mention it at all or clear it up um, or explain exactly how conversations went and if you did ask the question follow through or not I mean everything we know here actually just opens up more answers this is what is so this is what has got me possessed with this case, not just the simple mystery of it and the simple tragedy of it, but it's the, it is the, um, it's, it's these exact things. It's the fact that everything is so like, like smoke or water running through your fingers it's sand running through your hands through your fingers it, it, it's it's not solid you're unable to grasp at it and it's shape-shifting and it's trickery or it's it, it's it's um yeah it's just the deep mystery of it that's why i sometimes say more few mystery you know, we dearly want to know, let's have some faith in law enforcement because they've surely learned a lot from the Watts case that they investigated, from the Gannon Stauk case. And I, I don't know why I say Watts instead of Shanann Ruzek. I don't know why I sometimes say the perpetrator's name and not the victim's name. Um... So, you know, when we're thinking about Gannon Stauk or when we're thinking about Shannon Ruzak, I mean, the FBI and the local authorities have learned a lot. And I'd say they're bringing it to this case. And maybe there is some very deep mystery here, some things that just don't add up and they need to nail it down, obviously. Um because it's as intriguing as I think it is. So, yes, let's find Suzanne. Let's keep safe. Let's keep people around us safe. And 
yeah, just um, thanks for listening. But most of, no, most of all, thank you for the consideration you give everything. Thank you for that split second that you take a breath and stop and think and feel, process, before dialogue, before the wildfire, before the Chinese whispers, before any euphemism that you can come up with for the way things go around the world in 80 seconds, the way that a lie sticks and the way that the truth sometimes never comes to light.